And as promised, we've got a lioness walking off in the grass for you. This is the last one in this particular pride, the Sangama pride, moving from a termite mound uh, out to a place where that just looks like they're lying down in the grass, which is surprising. I suppose they'll move towards the end of the day, but you know, we've got some lines still to show you, which is nice. Here's the back of the ears. There's dark marks at the back of the ears. Two lioness. All right. Just keep on popping up out of the grass here. Those dark marks behind the ears, very conspicuous, and that is the communication signals. It's a visual marker that a lot of animals have. Lions have it on the backs of their ears. They have it on the tips of their tails, and they use it like flags, like signal flags, to flag cubs, to flag each other, to coordinate movements. It's, it's, it's not yet known uh, exactly to what extent they talk with their ears, but it is an absolute fact that they use their ears and their faces to, en well, the markings on their faces to enhance the, the movements. Now, Jason, and you're the first person I've ever spoken to out of Sri Lanka, so hello. Um, you'd like to know if lions have a spike at the end of their tail, and if so, what is it used for? Uh, Jason, it's not a spike as in like a, something out of myths and legends like a dragon spike, but I will say this, that if you take a cat's tail and you, you run your fingers to the end of the tail and you poke it, you will see that there's a fairly sharp, it's not a barb, but the tail comes to a fairly sharp, hard end. And that is because the spinal column extends to the end and the very tip of the tail and ends in a pointy bone. Very similar to the end of your finger, I suppose, except that there's a little bit more meat at the end of your finger. Um, so... There's a myth around that lions can goad themselves into a rage by thrashing their tail and the spike into their flanks and sides, which, um, which is a precursor to a charge. And, and there's a lot of books that I've read over the years that tell about this. And in part, it's based on some truth. There's a hard barb at the end of a lion's tail. It is a spike. And if thrashed hard enough against yourself, it will, it will hurt. Um, Lions, when they cross, do thrash their tails tremendously. Um, and an angry lion will thrash its tail up and down and from side to side. And it could look like they're goading themselves or whipping themselves up into a rage with a spike. But it's not the truth. It's just the two are very similar. Uh, the one is that a lion does obviously thrash its tail around. The other one is that it does have a sharp end to its tail, but it's not uh, used to make themselves angry. Hopefully that answered your question there, Jason. Um, the easiest way for me to explain what it feels like is to, next time you see a house cat, is to just run your, or run your hand down the tail, and when you get to the tip of the tail, just poke it with your finger, and you'll see that there's a hard barb at the end. Lions have exactly the same thing, uh, just obviously on a bit of a larger scale. I'm glad we get to still see these lines. Difficult to see individual features with this light that we've got. It's beautiful. Ah, there we go. Have a look at that quickly with your screenshots. Here's a lion cub, obviously bored with just seeing grass in front of its face. <laughs> Wanted to get a periscope view of what's happening in its world. I must say, I'd also climb a tree if all I saw was grass for weeks and weeks at the end. <laughs> Very cool. Lion cubs, very playful this time of the day. And they've just come out of a night. Mom's probably spent the night hunting in and around this area. They would have been on their own for most of the night, which is terrifying in this area. As you can see, there's not a lot of hiding places. And cubs with the ability to climb trees, like these are practicing now, is vital in this area because of the sheer number of hyena around. And uh, this is very good playing. Andra, you would like to know at what age would the cubs switch to eating only meat? Andra, they fully weaned. Um, oh, let me. They are weaned at a couple of weeks. So you're looking at between 12 and 16 weeks. They are already eating meat, but they will continue to supplement feed milk for between 9 and 12 months. Um, it's different. For, for different cubs and for different reasons, and it's mainly just nutrition and food-based. But 
they're eating meat from as little as, as, as eight weeks, possibly even a little bit earlier than that. They fully weaned at about nine months, um, where mom will stop giving them milk, but it's not uncommon for it to go up to about a year. You know, I wouldn't be surprised to see a cub suckling at a year. Um, that thing's starting to come out now. I think the little cub are going to tackle his mom. These little cubs, those are the youngest cubs that you're looking at over there. Oh, such a nice view before they disappear into the grass. All right, Tristan's got an elephant to show you. We're going to see if we can reposition slightly differently to get a better view of these lions. We'll be back with you just now. <laughs> 